Hey friend, in this video, I am going to be teaching you, I love this tutorial and um, I hope you do too, but I'm teaching you how to paint a very vibrant, big, juicy, <laughs> wet and wet style of Icelandic poppy in watercolor. Icelandic poppies are probably one of my favorite flowers on this planet. They're just so delicate and thin, papery um, and crinkly. And we are really capturing that with painting water first and just explosions of color, really vibrant, bright colors um, on the water. And so I wanted to paint these really large scale so that you can see the blooms happening with wet and wet technique using wet pigment in water. And then I'm showing you a fun kind of scraping technique with your brush that will give you the stamen details later on. So it's a very loose, but really fun, vibrant, beautiful, juicy painting. So if you're ready, let's dive in. All right. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be painting some really big, juicy, wet on wet Icelandic poppies. Icelandic poppies are one of my favorite flowers. And to give it this like misty kind of um, faded outlook, we're going to be painting wet and wet. So I'm going to actually paint the entire flower with just water. I'm gonna add a touch of pink to my water so that you can see it on my paper. You can do this with just plain water, clean water, um, or a touch of maybe an orangey pink color, whatever color Icelandic poppy you are painting. Um, but I'm gonna do a really large Icelandic poppy here and then maybe like half of one down here so we can get some big juicy blooms happening with our wet and wet, wet painting. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint using the side of my brush for really big petals. And then some of these little thin uh, marks will be with the point of my brush. Um, but every single petal is going to point back to the center of the flower. And I'm going to leave the center of the flower mostly untouched. So I'm just going to kind of make these big strokes. I'm going to add more pink to that so you can see that better but we're working really quickly. So I've got, you know, some, some areas where there's just thin line. And then some petals are more filled in, but I'm working very quickly so that when I go in to add color, eventually we get, we get a really nice, smooth blend. Maybe this petal is kind of cut off over here. And I've left a gap of just paper showing right here because that's like maybe going to be a highlight right there where the sun is really hitting that petal. So that we're playing with white space or negative space and positive space. Maybe re-wetting some of these top petals that I did first so that everything stays really wet. Then I'm gonna grab some cadmium orange and a touch of Scarlet Lake. And we're gonna bounce around these petals with some of this orangey color, some opera rose. And we're just gonna let the watercolor kind of do its magic. Obviously, so fun. Maybe I'll pop in some upper rose here. Cadmium orange spreads very nicely. Opera rose doesn't move as good as cadmium orange. But I also want to not totally take over the poppy with orange. I want to have a nice, like, dance between these colors. I'm just gonna gradually add in some darker color on top with these lines. If you don't know what Icelandic poppies look like, definitely look them up. They're really delicate. Um, thin petals. They've got a lot of like shadow folding texture on the petal. 
And so that's why I'm going in with the color and kind of adding these lines. Maybe add some lemon yellow deep and cadmium orange. And I'm gonna grab lemon yellow deep with some sap green and a touch of yellow ochre for this kind of smoky gold green color. I'm gonna lay down just a little C curve here for the bulb of the flower. And then I want no green in this next mixture, just lemon yellow deep and yellow ochre. And we're gonna use the tip of the brush to add in the stamen. I'll come back to that later with a darker color to really bring that forward. I wanna add in some more pink here now where it's still wet. But this wet and wet is what's fading these lines and it's making it look really blurry, which I really like. Maybe going back over some area with more red in my mixture to really bring it forward now. And the thicker the mixture is on your paintbrush, the darker or more opaque the color will be. So keep that in mind too as you're adding in these details. Just kind of dancing around the flower now and not trying not to overthink it. I know that that's hard to do when you've never painted something like this before, but there's always practicing this multiple times. Nothing wrong with that. I'm gonna grab yellow ochre, some Scarlet Lake, burnt umber. Four, and maybe a touch of green for going in on the stamen now, just in little hints for if I really dry my brush off and splay it out like this, I can get some fun texture. Instead of having to go in and individually add every single dot or line. I want to get that darker. So adding more burnt umber. Mars black. Drying it off. Splaying the brush out. This is looking pretty good. Now we're ready for the next flower. Keep it loose, keep it fun, but the um, beauty of this flower is the bleeds between all the different colors that I'm using. So the Opera Rose, Cadmium Orange, Lemon Yellow Deep, and Scarlet Lake, painting with water first. So now I'm gonna come over here and do um, a yellowish Icelandic poppy that's just kind of leaning this way. So again, the center of my flower I'm gonna kind of eyeball is gonna be around here. And I wanna catch the edge of this petal over here so that they bleed into each other because this pink is still wet. So I'm gonna grab just water on my brush, doesn't need to be super clean, 
And I'm going to pretend the center of the flower is going to be here. Kind of bring this up here. And again, some areas are just lines. Some are big, full petals. We're grabbing that to have a nice, fun bleed. Then I'll grab some lemon yellow deep and yellow ochre. And we're gonna do the same thing and pop in the color. This is gonna be a yellow poppy. So I'm gonna accent the lemon yellow deep and yellow ochre, maybe with some goldish brown. Just kind of lightly dropping that in. Avoiding that pink spot because I wanna keep that clean to show that fun bleed. Just barely touching my paper with these marks. Trying to get this yellow ochre, maybe a touch of this Mars black and burnt umber combination I have over here to use as my shadow color. So I'm gonna go in here on these lines first. Just kind of dance around, don't overdo these marks. Maybe a little green, greenish brown with lemon yellow deep, sap green, and then Mars black. grab Mars Black and Burnt Umber. We're gonna go in on this flower and that flower and darken the stamen area with most mostly pigment on my brush and just a slightly damp brush. So if you need to, you can go to your paper towel and kind of release some of that water. I'm gonna go up here first and kind of do that again with the splayed action comb downwards or upwards towards the flower or the center of the flower. Trying not to overdo it, but just giving that extra pop. Before I do this one, I'm gonna add a little more yellow to the stamen, like a yellow green gold, since there's a lot of yellow, warm yellow happening. I'm gonna do some thin, just flicks around here. Maybe some yellow ochre, same thing. I'm gonna try and leave that white gap right there for a highlight. I'm 
And while that's drying, I'm gonna come in here with a stem and maybe a bulb up here. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did for the petals. Start with just water. And the center of the flower, where the bulb is, is gonna be where the stem connects at the base of that. So we're gonna pull a stem out of this flower here. And Icelandic poppy stems are very wobbly and curvy, so we're gonna get a nice S-curve here. So I'm just gonna pull some water, just a, a water stem kind of through there. And we're gonna have a fun wet and wet stem situation. I'm using sap green, lemon yellow deep, and I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre. Oops. And just punch that in. You can always go back over that if you want more green in there, but I'm gonna leave that like that and then pull a bulb up here. Mostly water first. This obviously had more green in it. And same thing, punch in the color. Might do a little, here's the top of a petal coming out type of thing. Okay, last step is adding in that texture, that darker burnt umber and Mars black. Drying it off just a touch. Spreading the hair out. And there you go. You can, if you want to, go back on top of these petals and add a darker color to really make it pop. I'm really liking the faded look, um, especially in the areas where it's almost white. Um, so if you do go back in with that darker color, just make sure it's in very specific areas, like you could do some here, maybe some lines on the petals there. but. Have fun with it. Make sure you're breathing with each stroke so that you're staying relaxed because the whole point of this exercise is to have really big washy petals where you're not really overthinking anything too much. You're just kind of dropping in color and just hoping the brush touches the paper in the right spots. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but it takes a lot of practice um, to progress in this style of painting. So stay loose, stay, stay um, focused on having fun with it. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. As always, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being a subscriber, being a viewer, whatever it is. If you love the videos that you've been watching, if you love this video and other videos you've watched on this channel, please become a subscriber if you're not already. That just helps us continue to spread the love of this channel to the entire world. Um, and also liking and commenting on our videos. So let us know in the comments below if you enjoyed this tutorial, maybe try it out with a different flower, maybe a bearded iris, maybe a peony. Try out this technique where you're laying down water first for the shape and the petals and then plugging in color. I would love to know how that goes for you. Let me know in the comments. 
below if you tried this out while I was while I was teaching you, or if you tried this out with a different flower, or if you'd like to see a tutorial from us that's similar to this with a different type of flower, drop it in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.